Hello, my name is Ray, and I got an email. Oh, also, these are my friends Taylor and Peyton. When you introduce us, you should really stop and give us a second to say, yeah, hello, my name is Taylor. And I am Mighty Peyton, Lord of this commentary, scourge of truth and happiness. Yeah, 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 down with happiness and all that. They know, the viewers know. You interrupt my mighty introduction. Yes. How much longer is it? These two minutes! No, that's too long. I got an email from a fan, and it reads like this. Ray, you need to relax and just understand that you've got co-hosts, and you need to be respectful of us. Well, but two minutes is too long for an intro. Now listen to yourself. You sound like a little kid. Do you want to sound like a little kid while you do a Let's Play? What? No. Then let Peyton do her speech. I don't care anymore. Yes. Well, okay then. I got an email, and it talks about how much Taylor sucks. What? Well, I'm paraphrasing, but technically that's kind of what it says. It doesn't say that. Let me see. Hey, don't snatch. It's not hate mail. It's a rational critique. Well, you see here it it's says... It's just talking about how Lodi is a young girl, and she just lost her mother, and here we are making fun of how dumb she is. And actually, you know, it makes a lot of sense that a fan of this game would not like us doing that. Elodie is kind of one of those self-injection characters, where she doesn't have a really strong personality on her own, because you're supposed to put some of yourself into her. You could find a similar example from Cloud Strife in Final Fantasy VII, or from Katniss in the Hunger Games books. You know, I always thought that Cloud was really petulant and childish. And also, you missed this part of the letter where it calls you dumb. Well, yeah, if you're injecting yourself into the self-inject characters, then you would, by nature, find them petulant and childish. And it's not calling me dumb, just asking why I'm not more on your case. And they're right. I've been slacking off. It is groupthink. Yes, that is what is to blame. We are compelled by society to agree with one another. Come on, let's get back to our game. We got stuff to do. What, you got a hot date or something? No. Today is the day the big ball. We gotta dress up in our best, which actually is just gonna be our tuxedo and top hat, because you can't beat that, really. But look at this. Check it out. It's snowing indoors. It's beautiful. Is that really snow, or is it confetti? We have failed at everything. We didn't pass a single test. Guys. Man, I knew we should have put more into horse training. Why horse training? Because then we would be in shape, and everyone would turn their heads for all the right raisins. Yes. Peyton, we're 14. Those are the wrong raisins. Then why horse training? I don't know. We failed like 10 tests in a row, and they all scrolled by so quick, I could have sworn that one of them was horse training. We failed about four tests for, like, presence, composure, decoration, that kind of stuff. Oh, no. Our dad wants us to dance with the sons of the Duke of Kegels. But we are already engaged to the Duke of Sedna. Duke of Kegel, guys. Kegel. And our dad is not the Duke of Calories, he's the Duke of Caloris. Did you know that in Nepal, Lulu means boy parts? I bet that made Final Fantasy X really hilarious to some Nepalese people. <laughs> yes. There's like a bunch of different languages in Nepal, though. I think it was Nawari, but I don't know. I used to know someone and they told me that, so... Who is this fool Banyan, Duke of Marie, Earl of Serenitatis? Serenitatis. Serenitatis. Maybe Serenitatis. And I'm pretty sure that he's the guy whose province we saved by marrying the Duke of Sedna. Oh, then we did good. We should marry all the boys. This is a working strategy for us. I don't even... I don't even know if you could do that, actually. Of course we can do that. We can marry lesbians. Why not marry polygamy? Is that a slippery slope argument, or...? No, it is not a slippery slope. We can choose to marry anyone. Therefore, we marry everyone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A slippery slope implies that something's gonna happen because of something else, but this is just gonna happen. We're gonna marry all boys. I get that, but lesbian relationships might already be legal, you know. No, you don't understand. We're not getting married because of lesbian relationships. We're just gonna marry all boys. No, you don't understand. What I'm saying is that just because they have a sort of liberal take on marriage doesn't mean that you can marry everyone. What? But this game allows us to choose the relationships that we are in. Oh, okay, okay. I get it. We're on the same page now. Just because the game gives you the choice to marry everyone from the maid to everyone else doesn't mean that you can marry everyone at the same time. Oh, I, I know. hate this game. Yes. It was such a good strategy when it was possible. I mean, think. Everyone would have been married to everyone else because everyone is married. They're all allies that way. What were you going to do? Make them all live in the castle with you? G-strings and chest oil is mandatory. Also, we should marry all girls. Oh, but then we have to share. I want my options! Okay, fine, but G-strings are no longer mandatory. No, mandatory. Yes. Because your empire sounds depraved. Also cold in the winter, but more importantly, harmonious and utopian. It would be no such thing. Can you imagine the bureaucratic packet that you would have to go through to make this kind of legislation? It would mess up the tax code like a punch to the mouth messes up a kid with braces. Well, I guess that's okay. Some of our relatives are crazy anyway, and we probably shouldn't marry them. This is true, yes. And the castle full of naked people would get boring eventually, unless we made them fight to the death. Yeah, and I bet the guys wouldn't fight to the death over something like your honor, because it's too intangible. You have to create some kind of resource shortage. And they're simply not cracked up as they are meant to be. Oh my god, our dad is talking to some kind of tarted up, blind, purple bathrobe wearing, feather in her hair, 
blonde girl. You said blonde twice. I'm not sure if you noticed, but that girl is really blonde. It is morally inferior to pink with hair drills. Yes. I am not having this in my house, in my castle. And crazily enough, her name is actually Siren. I guess her parents just kind of looked at her and they were like, one day men will pluck wax in their ears instead of listening to it. You know, Siren is actually a name. I know, but really, what is it, like poetic irony or something like that, that this should be this fitting? No, irony requires a contrast of expectations, and what you have here is exactly what you expect. But I think it might be dramatic irony, because we the spectators know what Siren means, but the characters don't seem to. I don't think it really qualifies for dramatic irony. Our father performs the guilt counterattack! He gains the upper hand. Yes. No, we can't let him do that. We are a teenager. We must tell the King of Calories that he is no longer loved. And then we retreat to our room. Yes, and slam the door. There, we shall cry. Cry until our father apologizes to us. Where's the button for that? That should be a move. I could just hit spacebar and run to your room. Elodie, there's an enemy army coming. Spacebar. Elodie, would you like to get married? Spacebar. Everything solved with space by. That would create so many extra variables for the game to track. Like whether or not you ran to your room and cried after every single event and how people reflected on you for that. Elodie, there's gonna be a parade. Space by. Elodie, come to the ball. Space by. Elodie, say hello to your cousins. Space by. And every time you wait for your father to apologize. Yes. Well, in the interest of defending the game for our fans, I've gotta say, at least it reflects well on Elodie that she actually never does retreat to her room to cry. I guess so, but it's not like anything has happened that should require that, except for maybe the death of our mom, which we've gotten over. I think it is a shortcoming that we cannot run to our room to cry at a moment's notice. This game is full of practical shortcomings. We are in our room right now, there should be a button to lay down and cry until dad comes in. I think you guys aren't really judging this game based on its merits. This is like if you play Mech Warrior and then get mad because your Mech Warrior can't go to his bunk and cry until the commanding officer consoles him. Dude, if you could cry in your bunk in Mech Warrior, I so would have done that. Okay. I give up. I'm arguing completely on the wrong page here. Dude, being in charge is just the easiest opportunity to be childish. You think I would exclude this just to be in a queen? If Jack could cry specifically just to make Rose console him in Metal Gear Solid 2, I would have done that all the time. She'd call and she'd be like, Jack, we need to talk about our relationship. And I would be like, Rose, my suit makes me look so darn fat. My thighs look so huge. Why would you send me on this mission? I want to talk to Colonel. Put the colonel on the phone! Hello, Jacques. This is the colonel. Colonel? Colonel, does Rose think I'm fat? Yes. Colonel, put Rose back on the phone. Rose? <sighs> Hello, Jack. Rose, I'm breaking up with you! Also, you're fat! Did you know that that game's whole thing between Rose and Jack was actually based on Hideo Kojima's difficult love life as he was working on the game? Nope, I did not know that. Yeah, apparently he and his wife fought a lot because the stress of making the game was really getting to him and causing problems. Oh, well my vision would have been a much darker look into that, I suppose. I don't know about darker, but definitely stupider. I don't think it's dumb. I think we should address the unrealistic expectations that Jack's bodysuit sets for other spies. I never played this game! Yes, I just played along as the Colonel. What are we talking about? Oh, it's this game about a vixen male with long white hair in a full bodysuit, and he runs around and he shoots bad guys. After everything you do, your girlfriend calls you to complain. Do you get to change clothing as in this game? Yes. No, that doesn't happen until Metal Gear Solid 3. Well, this game has an execution sentencing. Focus on this game. Yes. But I don't really understand this guy's defense. I mean, do we have a demon possession clause? You mean like a not guilty by reason of insanity kind of thing? Yeah, if we say this guy's not guilty, does he go to the church until he's cured? They probably drill a hole in his head. So saying he's not guilty is like the same thing as an execution. Maybe we are one of the countries that makes you get a hole in your brain, and then you go to prison. Yes. I don't understand. Why would we do that? If you drill the hole in the head and you let the demon out, the guy is not evil anymore, right? So, why send him to prison? Punishment must be served! <laughs> yes. Justice too, if we have time. I don't want to do that. I think the only prison is in our house. I don't want to keep a demon locked up in our house. Actually, that is a bit strange that there's a prison right there in your castle. That's like if we kept a prison in the White House. Guys, I think that Nova might be more screwed up than we're giving it credit for. Oh, I don't know. I mean, we don't know how big Nova is. It could just be a little city-state. No, that can't be right, because there's all these dukes and duchesses and stuff. Well, you gotta think the game is heavily steeped in romanticism, so your groups are definitely gonna be small, and there's a lot of magic and nature. Actually, speaking a romance, and I know this isn't the same romance, but how come we don't have any suitors who are like breaking into our room at night? To what? Murder us? Presumably we have guards for that, yes. No, not for murder. To write poetry on our window with a diamond. You know that virtually all of those stories are fake, right? Nah, -uh, Sir Walter Raleigh. No, 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 I gotta stop you. Sir Walter Raleigh is pretty much a fictional character when it comes to his romance stories. Even this story where he put his coat down in the mud so Queen Elizabeth wouldn't have to walk in the mud? Even that one. But if it's any consolation, a lot of men were encouraged to start doing 
doing that kind of stuff thanks to the stories, fake as they were. On that note, it looks like we did get a love letter from someone, although it's about us with the squid and a bunch of really dirty stuff, and now it's out on the roof. It's probably for the best not to chase it. Speak for yourself. Yes, this is a game. We should take risks. Oh, Taylor, you know, I was thinking about the argument that all that romance stuff was fictional. Well, this is a fictional game, right? So why shouldn't we expect some fictional tier romance? I mean, I just want a letter from my fiancé, the Duke of Sedna. Would that be too much? Well, I don't know. Maybe they're dealing with a lot of stuff in the province of Sedna. Maybe you're getting letters and the game just doesn't tell you. Why would the game not tell me what my fiancé is writing to me? Maybe he is writing stupid things and the game is protecting your ego by not telling you. But... But that seems like a really important character thing, I should know about this. If they won't explore the personalities of the people that Elodie can marry, then what's the difference between one and the other? In game stuff? I don't know, I mean the Duke of Sedna has been useful, let you clear an event once. Yeah, but that's lame, cause then there's no reason to marry anyone except the Duke of Sedna, or someone who provides at least equivalent advantages. I will have you know I am very particular about what I need in a relationship. Well then, what do you need? Because I almost guarantee the game's not going to have it. I just want a guy to be willing to sit down and cuddle while I read him a book. Oh. I am going to vomit. See? I'm not too demanding. Just little personal details would be nice. Well, details being what they are, we're now being confronted with the reality that a little kid is inheriting a province. So, a little kid is inheriting a country, and getting married to a guy who might be illiterate for all we know because he's not sending us any mail. We should execute this boy. Yes, we haven't taken the opportunity to execute anyone. Well, the trouble is, in a game that's really decision-dependent, an execution is a really final decision. Plus, everyone reacts really poorly to it. In fact, I think if we tried to execute our magic teacher early on in the game, she would have killed us. Hey, thinking about that, our magic teacher likes to touch butts with girls, doesn't she? And our dad was really mad at our magic teacher. <laughs> yes, when it comes to witchcraft, riding broomsticks has certain connotations. Gosh, you are focused on love an awful lot right now, aren't well, you? Well, it's a social game. This sort of stuff is supposed to be important. Our dad was just angry because the magic killed your mom. Okay, I'm just trying to look for some dramatic intrigue here, you know, to spice things up a bit. Is there something in the air or what? Because you can't seem to deviate away from this. this I don't know. How would I know if there's something in the air? I don't know. Does your apartment smell funny? I think it would be more like a hormone thing, unless someone I was living with was releasing pheromones or something. Peyton, are you releasing pheromones? Always. Yes. Well, there you go. It's Peyton's fault. Well, Peyton, stop it. No. Yes. You can't make her. I've tried. Okay, well, fact still remains. You're injecting a lot of Please stuff. my body. Really I will right. release the pheromones if I please. Do you find the pheromones help at all? I mean, do they work? No. Yes. Well... Don't give up, because they're making Ray dumber, and that'll help you out with someone else. Oh, whatever, Taylor. You wouldn't know sexy if it dressed up as Santa Claus, parachuted down from the sky, and shot you in the back of the head with an AK machine gun. I, uh... I guess I wouldn't recognize sexy for what it was if it did that. You're right. It seems we have been confronted by the musician spy! Yes. I once again vouch for execution! You don't even get the chance for that this time. I just want one execution! One death, one pint of blood smeared on my hands. How can I be so cruelly denied of my whims? Yes. Should be another move, just like go cry to your room. Spacebar, go cry to your room. Tab bar, execution. Backspace, blame your advisors. Which you don't have. Blame your lack of advisors. I just feel like since we're roleplaying as a young kid, we really should have a lot more childish go-to solutions to our problems. It's good that Elodie is smart enough to always think things through, but I really want the choice to just play her like a kid. I mean, you know, she's so young, shouldn't that be a big conflict of her character? Like, she wants to flirt with all the boys, she wants to hold parties, she wants to go out. Well, how would you mix that with the game's central mechanics, which include becoming more productive at certain things when you're sad? By not having mechanics where you become more productive when you're sad? I mean, don't get me wrong, this is fun, but it's kind of like one of those dating simulators, you know, where you go to the bar and you drink and it makes you more charismatic. There's no drawbacks to doing it, but in real life you've got a balance between fun, social activities, and work. Well, it's only going to have so many realistic qualities, and besides, Elodie is kind of a character. Sort of a blank character for you to insert yourself into, but still a character. Yeah, but my stupid fiancé doesn't even frickin' write me letters! It just needs to lean further towards one side or the other. You know, a blank character is great if I have a lot of control, but if I have no control, Control, then make Elodie very vivid. It's not as fun to be swept along for the ride when it feels like the ride operator is asleep at the wheel. Although I will admit that today was a lot more fun, because we did more stuff. Well yeah, as the game progresses along, it throws more stuff at you, and the assumption that you have more potential to have learned something. But I still haven't seen a single horse riding check. That's because you haven't had to ride horses. It's because the game hasn't given me a chance to ride a horse. Which is kind of my whole gripe, really. If the game is going to give me the choice to learn about riding horses, it should give me the chance to ride horses. I just want to go off the rails a little bit. I want to write to my fiance 
we'd say, hey, do you like horses? Do you want to ride horses with me? And then we bond on that. I want to murder everyone. Yeah, there is the military skill. We should be able to learn military and then just fight people. Letting you automatically declare war might be a little bit harder, though. I don't know, we could go attack bandits and bring in money for the country or something. I just think a few more self-initiated events would help out a lot. But anyway, here looks like a good place to stop. Thanks for playing with us, everybody.